I'm excited for this panel. You see all these great faces with me. We're bringing back three of our guests. You see my good friend, Carlos Garcia, who's done a lot of co-hosting with me over the years here. So welcome back to a mental health break. We have a special show ahead. I'm going to have everybody introduce themselves here, starting with top left here. Am I top left? I think you're top left. <laughs> okay. Hi. Uh, my name is Gabriella Cushell. Um, I am an LMSW and one of Vin's friends from college, University of Tampa. All right. You... Anyone is fine. I'll go. I'm hi, I'm Tammy Key Kafer. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and I met Vincent a long time ago, a few years ago on his podcast. So Glad to be here. I'm Alec Rubenstein. Um, I'm the least qualified person on the panel. Uh, I'm a I'm a real estate attorney uh, in New York City. I've known Vin since I was, geez, I don't know how, probably 15, 20 years at this point. So uh, longtime friends and uh, looking forward to uh, speaking with everybody. And I'm uh, Carlos Carlos Garcia. Yeah, um, co-hosting today with uh, with Vince. We've known each other for about six years, huh, Vince? I think I came on your mental health um, podcast quite quite a number of years ago and sort of sponsored it for a little bit. And so I'm a licensed psychologist here in the Tampa, Florida area. Yep. And now, like everybody's story is the great story for this show. You're all here for a reason because they really shared their vulnerable moments. They shared the hard parts of the day-to-day -day that we all go through. We're going to start by revisiting all these past shows. Then we'll circle back with the latest and greatest in the world and some tips for success. Gab came on season seven, episode one. I had a baby in the height of COVID. Let's go back to that. Yes. Wow. You know, it's funny. I, I listened back to the podcast recently and so much has changed in three years. Um, you know, I have another baby girl, so I have two girls now and uh, the baby on the podcast is now a four year old. So, um, you know, really crazy to listen to. And honestly, it, it was nice to see like the professional and the personal growth personally. Um but yeah, very uh, hard thing to go through having a baby during a pandemic. No the, kidding. the narrative has definitely changed now that life is back to normal. So it was interesting to listen that we really were in the height of it at that point. When we were back in that time, like walk us through that process again, like actually finally leaving the house and having this baby during COVID. Yeah. So when I had um, my daughter, Lily, she was born May 2020. So the world shut down March. Um, and, you know, I had my doctor saying to me, you're going to have this baby by yourself. So like go home and sit with that and digest it. And really what ended up happening was a week before I had the baby, uh, my husband was allowed in the room. So I always say she waited for for him to to come and be with me and you know it, it was just so intense you know nobody knew what anything was we were being very very careful with her um so this time around it felt amazing to have a baby in like normal lifestyle you know my parents came to the hospital and my sisters got to see no one met her five you know six feet apart um so that was really a wonderful thing to experience after experiencing, you know, going through COVID. But, you know, funny enough, now she's four and she's asking me, we're, we call my mom lovey. We're lovey and pop at the hospital, you know, and I have to tell her like, no, you know, nobody was allowed with us. And my husband couldn't even leave the room. Um, so, really once we got home the the navigation of like trying to figure out you know what is normal and what's not i feel like we're still trying to figure it out but it's gotten a lot better well you're doing a great job and i'm so grateful you came on the show to help all those people you did with that episode that's still streaming all three of these episodes are high alec also had a baby recently carlos looked into his uh -huh. journey thought there was some overlap there carlos I'll let you take it away yeah, like I, I heard, you, I heard your podcast. I thought it was it was great as a um, sort of new father myself and someone that's always sort of trying to balance that 
home life with that life of being a professional, right? That sort of achiever type mentality. So I'm kind of curious what, what, you know, looking back on that experience for yourself, what have you gleaned? Like maybe some tips you can give folks who are constantly navigating that professional personal life balance. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I, I listened back to my episode as well. And I had that reaction of like, who was that guy even talking? <laughs> you know, like yeah. things have changed. <laughs> So much, even just in the past few months, you know, my, my daughter is now, I think, 16 months. So she started recently talking and walking and we have to keep an eye on her at all times now, you know. So everything is kind of evolving on like a day by day basis at this point. But I mean, I think one of the things that I have done and it's one of the things I really struggled with in the past was really being very aware of perspective. You know, when I get very bogged down and stressed with work, it kind of overwhelms me at times. And since I've, you know, since my daughter came along, it's actually been a really good physical reminder that there are other important things in life. Um, and so whenever I, you know, I commute to the city every day and whenever I come home, I do get that very tangible break and kind of blast with perspective when I see her. Um, so that has been, a really nice reminder to kind of just like audit myself a little bit when I get home. Um, it's, it, it acts as a nice, you know, it, it, I think sometimes when work is the only thing you have to kind of manufacture that break for yourself in order to keep kind of sane mind. Um, and so since my daughter came along, it's kind of really forced me to step out of work sometimes. Um, and believe it or not, it helps in a way because when I do, you know, come home, we feed her, we put her down for bed and everything. We hang out a little bit. When I get back to my desk and I check in, I'm refreshed. I have, you know, all of that, like kind of wear and tear from the day kind of has faded at that point. Um, so that's been a nice change. And it's, it's kind of forced me to really take stock of, of my life and my day when the days get a little challenging from a professional perspective. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. I, I I can totally relate. It's it's amazing. Parents had told me this before I had my child too. That there's right, like no matter how exhausted you are at the end of the day, you walk through that door and all of a sudden you're you're ready to be present. So yeah, yeah. beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. And Alec, it's great to see as of someone I grew up with. Just how great he's doing now. He's got his kid doing so well. Staying on top of his mental health. Thank you for coming back again. And Carlos and Tammy, I wish I could say this. I, rem I remember hooking you guys up and that's why I paired you up, but it is some little <laughs> overlap that um, they've had a past connection. Tammy came back on the show, um, her episode, season 11, episode one, preparing for the jungle, avoiding snakes and pitfalls on the path to healthy love. That's also part of a book. She's got an awesome practice. Tammy, it's great to see you. Let's go back in time to that episode now about two years old, almost. Thank you. Um, so first, congratulations to you guys on your babies. I think that's, that's yeah, definitely three, the though. most. So yeah, <laughs> that's the most rewarding part of my life is being a mom for sure. So um, yeah, so I listened to that episode and like you guys just listening, going, who is that? You know, that that there's, did I say that? I don't remember saying that, you know, and, and so it's fun to go back and listen to that. But uh, yep, preparing for the jungle is, sort of transforming into a get relationship ready. Um, basically the whole, the whole point is that you just need to check in with yourself, know what your, um, just your, how you grew up, what was role modeled to you, things that you dealt with and went through in your life is what you bring into your relationship. And, uh, and if you're out there in the dating world, if you don't figure yourself out first, then you aren't going to be available for a healthy relationship. And, I had to learn that myself. Um, so definitely going through all of that myself brought me to writing the book and putting a course together. So I'm a counselor doing couples counseling and I was doing couples counseling while I was going through a divorce and it was mortifying and like, okay, do as I say, but not as I do. And, and, you know, it's just kind of a, an eye opener. And that's, I think where I was like, man, I've just, you know, it takes two to get, to stay married and it takes two to get divorced. And I definitely had to step back and take a look at what I was bringing to the table. And it was, it was eye opening, but it's helped me 
um, get to the place where I'm now remarried and probably in one of the healthiest relationships ever. So I believe in it 100%. Well, congratulations on continuing to grow and make a big difference. As you said, something that's new is that course. Let's talk a little bit about that, how you're helping people that way. Well, you know, I, oh, it's a long process. I'll try to condense it. So I've always wanted to write a book. I started writing a book and I'm like, this is really hard. So I think I'm going to do an online course. So then I did that. And then I was like, I have to market this thing. And in school, they don't teach you anything about business and marketing. So in the last maybe two years, I mean, I didn't even know what a beta program was. I didn't know. I didn't know anything. My advertising, you remember those things where you had a, like a piece of paper with the little things on the bottom and you rip it off and then you call the person. That was my marketing. So I've, <laughs> I've come a long way, but, um, but yeah, I've got the online course and it has videos and worksheets because I think people just learn differently. And, uh, and I offer more of an individual, unique approach with the um, with the course, but the book is definitely out there for people that, that like to read. So, yeah. I love it. Well, let's plug you while we're on you right now. Where can we find all this great <laughs> stuff online? Uh, the, the best way is probably my website. It's healthyhealing.net. And, uh, and there's um, lots of articles and blogs and, um, and the book and the course and all the things. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for coming on. And while we're going around the horn, Carlos has an awesome practice. I want to shed some light on. He was kind enough to co-host today. Let's talk about some of the work you do. And he also, not limited to, he's been branching out, crushing it all around the country. So let's talk a little bit about what's the latest for you, Carlos. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so we, we have a wonderful striving practice here in Tampa, Florida, um, have just like the, the most amazing team of, of therapists, um, you know, working with our community around any sort of mental health and wellness issues. Um, and, and yeah, I've been traveling a lot, uh, sort of getting the message out there about the importance of mental health and mental wellness, um, you know, not, not just for us personally, but also professionally. And so um, sort of this is the first place I, I make this announcement. Only a, a few people know about this, but um, I, I just wrote a book. It's called uh, The Unseen Journey. Uh, awakening curiosity and trust in the corporate world. And um, essentially it's a message to uh, corporate America to go to therapy, right? To sort of like you were saying, Tammy, um, to, you know, do that inner work so that we can show up better as, as professionals, as leaders. Um, and so that should be coming out here in a couple of weeks. Well, I'm very proud of you. Congratulations. Congrats. Carlos has done the work, putting it out there again and again, always making a difference. But Rui, I'm excited now to shed more on what we talked about before. Now you're a new dad. You're working from home. You're feeling refreshed. How all? How does all that play with your mental health? Uh, yeah. I mean, listen, I I think a common thread you'll probably hear from anyone you speak to on the topic. I, I'm the work in progress, man. Um, I, I am a bit of a crash dummy in, in that sense, right? Like I'm always um, trying new things to make myself feel better, more in control. Um, I think, you know, any new parent can probably relate in that when you have a kid, everything else seems to kind of just be hanging by a thread um, and not some not in like a doom and gloom sense. It's just things that you would normally pay more attention to. You just can't anymore. Um, and for great reason. Right. Like, I, I think when you have a child, like 99 percent of your attention should be going to the child. Right. Um, but. Uh, you know, there's been drawbacks and there's been great, you know, great moments and great uh, moments of kind of like revelation and things like that. Like I said, like, I think I used to, and I, I believe I talked about this on the episode with you, like I used to get very sucked into work um, and it would affect everything. It would affect my relationship with my wife, it would affect my relationship with my family um, and affect just my kind of day-to-day -day interactions. I just, I, there were moments where I, I kind of talked about it. I had this indifferent um, attitude, right? Like I just didn't show a lot of emotion one way or the other. It was kind of just like an autopilot uh, when I was stressed with work. And now I, you know, I've kind of taken stock of that. And again, like the having a kid, you got to act silly all the time. So <laughs> um, I've, I've kind of, uh, I've kind of been able to check that a little bit. Um, but, uh, but I, I think, yeah, I, I think the perspective thing has been the biggest thing in the past year. Um, but again, work in progress work is really stressful. I'm kind of climbing my, my way up the ladder now. So everything is a little bit higher pressure. 
Um, you know, along with all the great things of having a family, there's obviously just inherent pressure, right? Like I want to be able to provide the best life I can for my kid and for my wife and for hopefully future children. Right. So, um, so that's been kind of the biggest pressure lately is that all of those, uh, you know, kind of built in life pressures start to really come to the forefront. Um, and you have to compartmentalize that a little bit as you're just going throughout your day-to-day -day life. I can't let, you know, like my whole, like one of my biggest things, which is a little cliche, but you know, I, one of my biggest things in terms of the way I hopefully succeed in my profession is I would never want to tell my kids they can't go to a certain college because I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it was how my parents were for me. And it's something that I want to be able to do for my kids. And so I have trouble sometimes because that's obviously a long way away. Right. And as much as I want to prepare for it and like just clip that goal right now, I can't. Um, and so sometimes you have to let tomorrow's problems be tomorrow's problems and focus on today. Um, so again, that's been kind of one thing that I've been, I wouldn't say struggling with, but kind of just tackling a little bit on a day to day um, basis. Um, and yeah, I, I think, you know, as much as I was, listening to my episode saying, who is this guy? Um, it's a lot of the same themes, I think. Um, it's just, I think some things are more elevated now and some things kind of have taken a back seat. Um, but I would definitely say that I feel more prepared, I think now to kind of tackle the internal stuff a little bit. Um, I don't know why necessarily, but I just, I, I something about having to take on more responsibility and just um, kind of have to keep external things in control so that your people that you love are all okay. Um, I think that's helped me a little bit kind of do the same for myself. Um, so it's, you know, all good, man. All good. Good and things. And this guy starts the show saying he's at least qualified, comes back with a response <laughs> like that. Thanks for sharing all that. You absolutely that sounds like growth to me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a little bit. Thing. Hopefully. Hopefully. A lot of growth there. Congratulations on how far you've come. And Carlos, if you have anything to add, always feel free to jump in. Uh, we're shifting back to Gab over here. Gab, we know where you were at when you came on the show. You walked us through that incredibly mayhem, chaotic time, but amazing time. <laughs> What's the latest now? I know your practices has grown a little bit as well. Yeah. So when we had spoken literally almost three years ago to the date um, is how long I've had my practice open. So I've had it for three years. It's just me. So I am seeing about like 20 people client base and I see around 10 weekly depending on like what my weeks look like because I am a stay at home mom and also working. So, you know, um, I, I get the pleasure and honor of working from home. Uh, I, I'm still doing telehealth. So it's been great for my lifestyle, as well as my clients. Um, I haven't had too many people ask me if I'm going to get an office soon. I live in New York. So Alec, we might need to talk after this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the office space is really, it's so expensive. So, you know, yeah. for me working from home, having the girls upstairs, you know, having childcare, uh, it works out really well, but um, yeah, so I love it. You know, it's grown so much since the episode and, and hearing myself talking, I'm like, wow, I've done so much in these three years that, uh, it's not, it was a nice moment to reflect, but yeah, I've just kept a steady client base and, um, I meet, I used to meet, um, at now that I'm coming back from maternity leave, I'll go back, but I was meeting with a supervision group of about nine other therapists every Tuesday and we'd share our perspectives and different caseloads. And that was just massive for my growth in, in my practice, just having other people because it can get lonely and isolating when you have your own business and it's just you. So, you know, having different colleagues and, and people in the field is always super wonderful. That's why I was so excited to come on today. 
Well, I mean, everyone shared how much growth they've had. It's absolutely inspiring as a friend to see it all happen. Since we crushed it time-wise, I'm going to do a last word, Gab. We're on you, so we'll go back around the horn. Share your last word for everyone, maybe a mental health challenge, some sort of inspiration. And then please let us know where we can say hi to you. I know everybody's going to look forward to. Okay, great. Um, So my word or two words is be present. I think Alec touched on it before of, you know, like tomorrow's problems or tomorrow's, uh, you know, I think a lot of what I see in my practice, fear-based depression, all of it stems from being in the past or being in the future and not being in the moment. Um, So be present, meditate if you have a few minutes, download a meditation app. I'm really big on like that can be life changing in itself. Um, So yeah, just enjoy the day and be present. That's my word. I love it. And where can we say hi to you online? Where can we find your practice online too? Uh, So you guys can uh, look up my practices on Instagram. It's calm me underscore counseling and uh website com me counseling.com c-o-m not c-a-l-m and um and yeah that's really it those are those are my avenues i'm like tammy said marketing you go to (laughs) you get your master's in psychology they don't teach you how to get the clients before so you know that is making your own website all that stuff so uh definitely a learning curve yeah (laughs) thanks again for coming on gab rube thanks so much for having me you coming to me what do you want to sign off with today my friend yeah no i mean i feel like that i feel like be present is a pretty good one. That's a tough one to beat. Um, yeah, I, I think like it sounds a little cliche, but keep the main thing the main thing. I think that's, you know, especially Anna, Carlos, you, you said it like I, I saw that you're writing a book on on corporate America. Um, obviously resonates really a, a lot with me. Um, and so what I would say is that your professional life is really derivative of the things that you do around your profession. Um, and so you know, there's a lot of life going on outside the four walls of an office. Um, so I would say that uh, do your best to enjoy what else is out there, because um, chances are that will, uh, you know, that joy and happiness will leak into your personal life uh, and your professional life uh, pretty significantly. And uh, you'll probably enjoy a lot of success from it, or at least I have uh, I have experienced that uh, mostly in the last year, especially. So well, it's great, it's great to see this growth, man. I mean, just unbelievable where can we say hi to you if people want to say hi yeah uh, i'm on instagram um it's i think al underscore ruben um just apologies for the name (laughs) Um, but yeah that's it well thanks so much for coming on i was so excited to catch up with everyone now back we'll we'll have carlos finish it off for us tammy give us your last word you know, I think that that I just wrote my second book on anxiety. It's from chaos to calm, and it's in print it, with my publisher now. So I'll have to pop back in here and let you know the update. Yeah. But between anxiety and relationships, and I think I think my words would just be honor yourself. You know, really step back, make the time for yourself, like you guys are all saying. But pay attention to what your body needs, what your mind needs, what people need around you and your boundaries. I mean, there's just so much to it, but honor yourself. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think that when you when you can stop and listen, it you can move forward when after you take that pause, you can move forward with so much better intention um, in every aspect of your life. So yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Tammy, and for coming back. Where can we find you online? Uh, my website is the best. Um, I'm old, so I'm on Facebook. I'm trying to figure out Instagram. <laughs> um, I'm getting there. I'm doing some TikTok. I saw you stuff. on there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love that, Tammy. <laughs> but I've got two Facebook groups. Um, I've got a relationship revolution. It's a private group for women um, with the relationship stuff. And then I've got another one called Overcoming Waves. Uh, crucial tactics to work with through your anxiety and that's on Facebook also Um, but I'll be on Instagram you just watch I'm gonna make this happen (laughs) Uh, I saw the handles are created that's the first step you'll be active I trust in no time (laughs) thanks so much and Carlos your last word before we sign off today 
Yeah, I, I think it would be um, sort of keep going, right? Like like we just kind of shared everybody today, the ups and downs of life. And um, I think it's a constant reminder to people that, um, you know, life isn't always about just seeking the the happy moments and the, the pleasurable moments that a lot of our most beautiful lessons come through the struggle. And so honoring those as well. Awesome, Carlos. And where can we find you online? Yeah, so uh, Facebook or Instagram, uh, Dr. Carlos A. Garcia. Um, if folks want to look at our practice, tampocounselingandwellness.com. Uh, and in about a month or so, people will be able to find me on drcarlos.com um, if you know anybody wants to book me for a speaking engagement or my book or anything like that. Oh, man. I, I knew today was going to be great, and it certainly even exceeded <laughs> that expectation. I really appreciate everyone coming back on, giving another great show. If you missed their first episodes, I'll be sure to put them in the episode description. I'll put how to say hi to them as well in there. But with that, we're going to be signing off. We have one, two in Florida, two in New York, one in Colorado. Are you still in Colorado, Tammy? I am, yeah. All right. My son is in New York, so I'll have to come visit you guys. He lives, he goes to school there. <laughs> well, Definitely. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in or viewing, depending on what you have going on. And to you all for coming back. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, guys. Good to meet you guys. Yeah, yes, you too. You as well.